RDIEC. Good morning. On behalf of the RDIEC, I would like to introduce MLA, Mr. Daryl Harrison of Cannington. Um, Mr. Harrison, I'd just like to thank you so much uh, for joining us here today. Daryl's been a longtime farmer in our area, and now he is representing uh, the Cannington constituency. Uh, all the kids out there and adults, uh, we have a great opportunity to listen and, and to learn a little bit more about um, government today. God forbid uh, the government uh, and different ideologicals across the world and beliefs are, have sure been in the news. Before we begin, I'd just like to uh, tell the kids out there, if you're watching this, you simply have to go to the QR code uh, to enter your name in to win a $50 gift certificate. So without for further ado, Daryl, I'll let you take your way in. Again, thanks so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. I uh, appreciate the invitation and the opportunity to share with your, your students out there. Uh, as, as Mr. Cameron said, I'm Daryl Harrison. I'm a, a lifelong resident of Elida, Saskatchewan. It's a small community in, uh, in the very southeast corner and uh, about a population of 130, 135. And uh, I live on a farm just uh, outside of town, about four miles. So uh, we still have uh, a commercial herd of cattle and uh, run a cow calf operation and uh, love, love the egg life and the farm ranch life. It's, it's uh, no better place in my opinion. So, but thank you for that. Uh, just so a little backgrounder on me, uh, very community minded. Uh, I've served on the credit union board. I've, uh, Lions member. I've been on the school board, both uh, the current uh, Southeast Cornerstone School Division and as well as the Sewer Springs Mountain Division, which was uh, a prior division uh, prior to the uh, amalgamation. So I uh, have some experience there and rec board, uh, minor hockey, um, curling, just anything going on in the community, I, uh, I try to participate in. A uh, longtime 4-H mem member as well, uh, current stock grower uh, member for Zone 1, and uh, really, uh, really can't say enough, <clears throat> excuse me, about uh, ag. And uh, I've also, along with the commercial cow herd, I've also worked in the oil patch from a, a tank truck driver in the early days to a production foreman for uh, NAL Resources out of Best Land, uh, Saskatchewan. So it was, uh, it was good experience. The, uh, the oil and gas industry treated uh, myself and my family very well. And uh, I have to, uh, to give uh, a huge shout out there. It's a very uh, prosperous industry and it's uh, an industry that can be very rewarding as well. So with that, I, uh, when our, our past prior member of uh, the legislature, Dan Dudamont announced he was retiring, I uh, discussed with my family the opportunity and I had to uh, seek the nomination for the SAS party to, uh, to get my name on the ballot in the upcoming provincial election, which was held in the fall of 2020. So that was a very, uh, a very competitive event. There was, there was three of us in, in the end that had our names on the nomination ballot and uh, I had to reach all corners of the constituency and, uh, you know, talk to people, sell memberships, and also get them to come uh, to our poll. It was where the, the uh, nomination vote was held. And uh, I can't thank my supporters enough for uh, taking the time and spending the money on a membership and taking the time to come out to our poll that e evening. And, uh, and supporting myself. So uh, thank you to them. And then also in the general election, I got to thank my constituents uh, that supported me there as well, because uh, they are the ones that put me where I am today. So moving slides. Sorry. There we go, a couple of photos of myself. Uh, winter uh, grazing there, we, we both graze uh, corn standing and, and swath grazing for our cows. And then we calve about the middle of April. So we're, we're generally on some, some grass 
not much there to uh, to uh, eat yet, but we uh, we feed and kept cattle out on grass. And then the uh, portrait there, that's my official portrait. They take that uh, the first uh, month that you're at the ledge and uh, that gets uh, put with the rest of the M MLAs and uh, cabinet members and the premier, as well as the speaker of the house. And just a little bit on the industries around Cannington. So uh, grain, uh, oil seed, uh, pulse crop farming is, is, is big and uh, a little slower this year getting uh, seeds in the ground, but it's coming along. But uh, it's a huge industry, not just in Cannington, but across the, across the province. And then the oil and gas industry as well. Um, Couple shots of uh, some pump jacks in, uh, in the foothills of Moose Mountains, and uh, it it just creates a, a ton of employment. You know, from the uh, the surveying of a lease to uh, uh, the construction of the lease to the drilling rig coming in. Uh, I guess there's the you know they call it the the rat hole rig that comes in prior to the drilling rig, and it's just so much generated from one well. Uh, getting drilled and, and brought on into production and, and uh, not, not to mention the royalties that, that oil and uh, gas paid to the province to help uh, help fund our, uh, our budget. Um, more pictures of ag, uh, you know, bales, or as, as a cattleman, you're putting up bales on the, uh, in the fall and, you know, hay in the summertime and, uh, feed your cows all winter. Um, those aren't my cows on the right, but uh, uh, run mostly a black Angus commercial herd uh, with black Angus bulls. And I should just mention, uh, we still currently run the herd and I, and I must give credit to my fat family, specifically my, uh, my wife, Cheryl, and my son, Thomas, because they, uh, they do the line share of calving now while I'm in session in the spring. So the current picture up there is the uh, Alameda Dam. The, uh, the spillway is, is flowing there. It's a beautiful picture. It's a remarkable uh, body of water. It provides uh, hours and hours of recreation uh, uh, for area residents and, and draws tourists in uh, from uh, across the province and Manitoba and, and even into North Dakota, Montana. It's, uh, it's great. The, uh, the picture on the right is the Chateau at Moose Mountain Provincial Park. Uh, the park is a, it is a jewel in the prairie, so to speak. It, it's kind of one of those anomalies that you just don't expect as you're driving on the, on the flatter terrain. And then you get, uh, you get to the beautiful Moose Mountains. So, so it's good as well. I should probably identify just where Cannington kind of uh, all the communities it entails. Uh, it, it starts uh, on the Manitoba border there, just uh, north of Maryfield, and then uh, continues west, includes uh, Wawoda, uh, Moose Mountain, uh, Corning, north of Stoughton, uh, includes Fillmore, Creelman, uh, includes uh, Griffin, and then cuts down uh, to include Lampman and Frobisher all the way to the, the U.S. border and all the way across to the Manitoba border. So it's quite a large area in uh, uh, mostly smaller communities. I think Carlisle would be the lar largest community and uh, Elida would be one of the smallest uh, ones. So quite a, quite a wide range. And um, I'm just gonna comment on the most rewarding part of the job is for me, it's speaking to people, uh, I suppose, constituents and, uh, and people from, from across the province, you know, even into the, the US and, and Manitoba and well across the country really. It's a, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to learn, listen and learn. And uh, I find there's a lot of listening to do because there's a lot, a lot that uh, is available for me to learn and I certainly don't don't know at all and I'm eager to learn and talk to people. 
if there's any questions, I'll be glad to take them now. And if there's anything I, I uh, failed to fill in, please, Mr. Cameron, uh, feel free. Well, thank you very much, Daryl. Um, really appreciated that. Just an overview of uh, our constituency here at uh, Cannington. And uh, for the kids out there, Daryl, what was your biggest interest in, in politics? What was your driving force to, to get into politics? Well, I've always been a, a, a political enthusiast and a news junkie, uh, so to speak, but there's, there's always uh, governments impact everyone's life and, and with government there's, you know, politics and, and it's, uh, it's the ability to navigate and, and work through, uh, you know, situations, uh, certainly Government responsibility is 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 huge in healthcare and and uh, schools, uh, both uh, pre K to twelve and post secondary. The uh, highways, of course, are, you know everybody's driving and find a rough highway in your neck of the woods. Uh, I get calls regarding that, so it's 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 very involved, and I'm very eager to try to try to help and and leave. The province better than than I found it. I guess if that's a, a fair term. I lived here all my life, so it's it's kind of uh, been part of uh, my life throughout. Well, thank you, Daryl. Another question for you: How how do you think we as Saskatchewan people fare coming out of the pandemic? I think it's done very well. We have uh, uh, lots of job creation. Uh, K plus S potash just announced they're going to do double their potash production at Bethune. Uh, oil and gas uh, drilling is going to pick up here after road bands. Uh, there'll be lots of job opportunities. Uh, job opportunities create uh, um, growth for for people and, and people living in the communities. And you know, good paying jobs uh, lead to you know the retail businesses in those communities growing. Uh, the recreation facilities, it just all, all kind of builds together and, and uh, coming out of the pandemic, it's, it's very, very, uh, everybody's e eager to get out and do the things they, they used to do, uh, you know, large get gatherings, whether it's a fish derby at Alameda or, uh, or the wildlife fundraiser at Oxbow, uh, those kind of annual events that, that take place, everybody's eager to get, uh, get back to doing that. Errol, Kevin here, just uh, a comment, maybe more than a question. It, it's, I, th I think a lot of people don't realize or students don't realize that you, you're, you're, you're an MLA now and you, you know, that's a lot of work involved with that and it's away from home, but pretty well every MLA had another job that they left. It's like you, you have the, you've got the farm and you mentioned your wife and son are back there. So is, it, is that a difficult juggle to, to try to keep, you know, keep your other other interests going and, and you know because you know I don't think every any politician thinks this is a lifetime thing that you're you know you're not in it for the next 35 40 years perhaps but you know you got a, you got another job back home to, to kind of take care of is that is that a difficult uh kind of juggling act at times yeah no that's that's where the discussion come in with my family prior to the uh, South party uh, not nomination process because it was going to be a load and, and yes I, I I do want to continue to farm uh, and ranch when uh, when I'm no longer an MLA, so we got to kind of keep it going. It's not something you can just get into and 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 uh, out of very easily. You have to kind of keep uh, you know your herd herd maintained all the way through. So uh, certainly it's a big load. Um, the the house sits uh, twice a year, fall and spring, and uh, it's Monday to Friday. Or sorry, Monday to Thursday. And uh, so I'm generally home Friday and, and the weekend. So, so that part's good, but it goes pretty quick. Uh, in, in the legislative bu building there, I have a, an office, but it's just myself. Uh, I just want to be clear that, that there's, no, there's no staff in my office to pick up the phone there. It's, it's just me. The constituency office, which is located here, and a lot, lot is, is, is staffed by a constituency assistant. Uh, Trisha Schulhauser is my, my uh, my full-time CA and uh, April Junk is my part-time uh, casual CA and Cordelia Patton is also another uh, part-time CA. 
uh, when I need uh, need somebody to, to fill in. So uh, they're here uh, Monday to Friday, and uh, they take uh, the line share of the calls and uh, and emails and uh, pass them on to me, and and uh, I get to call back and and, and talk with. Uh, constituents regarding their concerns and, and whatnot. Uh, I do get a lot of calls on, uh, on border issues, uh, uh, lots of federal uh, questions as well. So uh, I, I, I do steer constituents in the, in the right direction that way, but also try to provide support uh, to the, the federal government or the local MP to, uh, to try to uh, resolve these concerns. Are there are there a lot of events to attend? You know, within your constituency. Oh yes, no. There's there's uh, several events. Uh, uh, I guess the next one upcoming is not in Cannington, but it certainly affects Cannington. Is the uh, Saskatchewan Oil and Gas Show? It's held uh, biannually in Weyburn, and it's uh, takes place June first and second. And it's a uh, it's a large event for the oil and gas, and it's time for for uh, oil companies and contractors to, uh, to come together and display their, uh, their equipment and their technology and vi visit with people they work with. So that's, that's you know, the next uh, large event. The uh, one following that is the Stock Growers uh, Annual General Meeting. It's in Assiniboia. It's the following week and, uh, and then there'll be 4-H uh, Achievement Days around and uh, regional fairs. And, yeah, there's there's lots to do. And, uh, not always enough time to get it all done, but uh, I, I I do what I can and and, and try to get out to, to different communities. Daryl, what would you, uh, Jeff? Here again, what would you tell the kids out there that are uh, watching this and that are going to watch it about classes and so forth? If if they're interested in uh, joining a party, uh, what what would you tell them? What would be some things that they could uh, look at? Well, there's there's lots of information out out there, but you know it's important to to reach out and and ask some questions because with all the information out out there, sometimes the the questions still need to be asked because you'll have have own thoughts in your mind to uh, to get some clarification around you know what this party stands for, that party stand, stands for, and uh, there's 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 no uh, no harm in asking questions and, and getting further information. So yeah, dig, dig and, and, and ask and, and uh, talk to some local local leaders, some local politicians, you know, your local councillors, your mayors, your Reeves. Um, it's, it's the same, same role just on a local le level and you get calls with uh, concerns, complaints, uh, It's just good. I mean, you get to know know your constituents or your 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 ratepayers if you're a, an urban or a rural uh, councillor. It's uh, but but just yeah, reach out and, and ask and and uh, it's it's very important to to be engaged. Uh, our democracy in uh, in Saskatchewan and, and Canada is is very important, and we need good people to step up to. Uh, fill those roles. Well, like to hear the word democracy and, and freedom. Excellent. Thank you. This is a little bit uh, of a lighter question. Uh, the MLA, uh, Mr. Dan Dutremont, that you replaced um, was the long running goat milking champion here at the Alameda Fair. I just wondered, uh, how are your goat milking? Are you going to be able to uh, continue on that championship reign that uh, he did? I uh... I have participated in the, in the goat milking uh, uh, at the Alameda Fair, and uh, I oh. did not win. But uh, I'll have to work on my, uh, my my skills. Oh well, thank you. I I didn't know you actually participated here at the at the fair yet with that. So yeah, I I must say the uh, the former uh, general manager of the credit union was the one that talked me into do, doing that on his behalf, I believe. Uh -huh. Well, that's awesome. Unless there are any more questions, and Daryl, I'd just like to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I know you must be fielding so many emails and, and questions and, and phone calls. Um, we can't thank you enough here at the RDIEC for 
uh, talking to us and uh, talking to the kids out there. And uh, they are our future. And uh, you are our, our present future. And I, I thank you on behalf of all of the constituents here uh, for, all, for the job that you do. Take care. Thank you very much, Mr. Cameron.